We continue now at the top of Daf Kuf Mem Beis Amid Beis and Maseches Baba Basra. This is Baba Basra Daf 142b. And the previous summit, the Gemara was discussing the opinion of Rav Sheshes that Mizake Le Uber is Karna, that if somebody tries to transfer something to an Uber to a fetus, the fetus is able to acquire. And the question was from a mission in Maseches Nida, where it says that the Uber is not able, or it says that a child that's one day old, rather, is able to inherit it and is able to bequeath. And the implication of that mission in Nida is that only when the child is actually born, but if the child is an Uber, then the child does not inherit it. So therefore, it seems like a Mizake Le Uber, if somebody would transfer something to a fetus, it would not be a Kenyan. And the Gemara answers that the answer is in accordance with what Rav Shesha said with regards to a different question on that Mishnah. Rav Shesha explained that the Mishnah is talking about a situation where this child is inheriting from its mother and then the child dies and so the paternal brothers of the child will then inherit from the child that dies and that can only apply to a child that's actually been born. The reason why it cannot apply to an Uber, even if you say an Uber in general is able to inherit, is because by an Uber, as the Gemara now explains, the humayis beresha, by an Uber, you, it's always going to be that if the mother dies, the Uber will die first. And therefore, the halacha is that a son is not able to inherit from his mother if he's already died, if he's already in the grave in order to bequeath to his paternal brothers. That's just not possible if the Uber dies first and there's no other way for it to happen. It's always going to happen that the Uber will die first. And the Rashbam here continues from the previous summit. Again, lahanchil mamon we're talking in the Mishnah Nida where the, where the child is bequeathing to his paternal brothers. He's inheriting from his mother, then he dies and gives to his paternal brothers. And the Rashbam says, this idea over here, it's not learned explicitly in a Mishnah, but it's inferred from the following Mishnah. It says that, let's say, the house falls on the child and on the mother. It sounds like if the child dies before the mother, so then it's not going to transfer again to the heirs of that son, to the paternal brothers in this case. That's the idea of, it's not explicit of Ein Haben Yoresh Imo Bekever, but it comes out from that Mishnah. We have the same kind of inference in Yesh Nochlin. It says, just like when you're talking about a husband and wife, the husband does not inherit his wife in the grave. The same thing by a mother and her son. The halach is the son does not inherit his mother in the grave in order to bequeath to his paternal brothers. And therefore, when you're talking again about an Uber, the Uber is always going to die first. And when the mother then dies, you cannot go to that Uber that already has died. It's not going to go through that Uber, so to speak, to the paternal brothers. But if it would happen, which it doesn't, but if it would happen that the mother died first, and then the fetus would die, he actually would bequeath and it would transfer to the paternal brothers, because really I can say to you, the Uber Yoresh, that an Uber does inherit, that's how we'd be able to interpret that mission again in Meseches Nida. Again, the son is not going to be able to inherit the mother in the grave to bequeath to the brothers, to those paternal brothers. And the Gemara says, Does that mean to say that again, the Uber is always going to die first? But there was a situation where they saw that the Uber was moving around a little after the mother had died. It seemed like the Uber was alive. And the Gemara says, Amar Mar Baravashi, Mar Baravashi says, Mi did the Havi Aznav Hal Toshim Efarchestis. That's the same thing you find by the tail of a lizard. It might move around, but that does not necessarily mean that the lizard is alive. And the Rashbam explains, Upirchas Uber Achar Yetzias Nafsha. That was a case where the mother died first and the Uber was still moving around. Umishani. And the Gemara answers, Mi did the Havi Aznav Hal Tots. Similar to what we find by the tail of a lizard, Shem Efarchestis Achar Shechatchua Min Hal Tov Ein Bachias. You can cut the tail off the lizard and it will still shake around, but that does not mean it's alive. There is no life in that situation. And the Gemara continues with another answer for that mission in Meseches. Nida Mar Breder of Yosef Mishmei de Rava Amar. Mar, the son of Rav Yosef, says in the name of Rava. Lomar, what it means to say is, Shememayit Bechelek Bechorah, that he minimizes in terms of the share of the firstborn. Vedavka Ben Yomecha. The Mishnah is saying there the child has to be at least one day old, meaning the child has to be born. Avol Uber Lo, but if it's just a fetus, then we're not going to say that. My time, what's the reason? Vyoldu Lo Amar Achmon. It says that there has to be an actual leda, there has to be an actual birth. The Yomar Mar Breder of Yosef Mishmei the Rava, because Mar the son of Rav Yosef said in the name of Rava, Ben Shanolad Laachar Misas Aviv, if his son is born 
after the death of his father, he does not minimize in terms of the portion of the firstborn. My time, what's the reason? Because again, it says he has to be born, and that does not occur in this situation. And the Rashbam explains, Mar Breder of Yosef, Mishmei the Rav Amar Mar, the son of Rav Yosef, says in the name of Rava to explain again the Mishnah Masech Nida. Really, I can say to you as follows. Zimnin dehi ma'isa b'reisha. It is possible that the mother can die before the fetus. It's possible that she dies first, v'yachakach uber, and then the fetus dies. Uma'anchilo uber la'achin min ho'av. And it's possible to say that, again, a fetus is able to bequeath to the paternal brothers, du uber yoreshu. We can explain that a fetus does, in fact, inherit. V'yafagav the tiritz rava la'el. Now, parenthetically, the Rashbam says, even though rava before said, sh'ani hosam de mekar refuri merafya bahadai, we said in Omer Aleph, that it's different over there by the chazaka because they weren't sure when they were making a chazaka. And the point of that answer on the previous Amud, the point of that answer was that Rava was saying that an Uber does not inherit, and here we're bringing an answer from Rava that really an Uber does inherit. The Gemara always does that, where they're just trying to give you different possible answers. And so over here we're trying to say a possible answer one could give. So now going back to this Mishnah in Mesech Nida, this Mishnah, the Ben Yomecha Nochel Umanchel, again it says that the child that was born uh, one day old is able to inherit and bequeath. Lav lemuute uber midin Yerusha. It's not coming to exclude a fetus from Yerusha. A fetus can also inherit. So then why are we only talking about a ben yomechud? Why are we talking about that the child was born if a fetus can also inherit? The idea is that there is a difference between the, the child that's born and the uber because it's coming to exclude that he doesn't minimize the chelik bechora. We're going to explain. Shebol lomar means to say as follows. The ben yomechud, if a child is born is one day old, that child is going to take away that firstborn, the extra portion of the firstborn. For example, let's say Yaakov dies. He leaves over two sons, Ruven and Shimon. He leaves over two sons, Ruven and Shimon. He leaves over twelve mona. So then, of course, the Bechor is going to take double of the brothers. So what's going to happen in this case is Ruven's going to take eight portions and Shimon is going to take four portions. Now let's say Levi is born while Yaakov is alive. And let's say Yaakov dies on that day after Levi was born. So then, so Nimsa Notel Ruven Shisha. So that then, when it, we talk about the portions that everyone's taking, so Ruven's going to take six. Shimon Shlosha, Levi Shlosha. So then Shimon's going to take three, and Levi's going to take three because Ruven's taking double what the other brothers take. Umeis Levi Bobayom. Now let's say Levi dies that day. Achare Misasavev after his father dies. To have a Ben Yom Echad. That's a case where he's already one day old. So now the three portions that he was supposed to get are now, now are going to be divided among his brothers. Of, the, of this portion of three portions, Ruven's not going to get any extra. The Shimon and Ruven are going, to, are going to inherit equally those portions. Because there, they're getting it from Levi, they're not getting it from the father. It's only from the father that Ruven gets a double portion. So it's going to come out in this case, Ruven is going to take seven and a half portions with Shimon Dalid Monim Vachatsi and then Shimon's going to take four and a half portions. Nimsa, Shemia to Leidas Levi Leruven, Chatsi Monim, Mechelik Bechoras. So it comes out that the fact that Levi was there, it took away a little portion of Ruven's Bechor. It took away a half a portion. And this is only true if Levi was born, he was a day old. But let's say Levi was a fetus at the time that Yaakov died. And then Levi was born. Then Levi would not take away anything from the chilek of Ruven's Bechor. He would only take away from the regular portion, but not the extra portion. How so? Let's say again the father dies. So in this case, Ruven would take of this of the twelve portions. Ruven would take over would take four portions. Because we count it as if the uber is not a, is not around. Because the only uh, children that were actually born at this time was Ruven and Shimon. And then the eight other portions are going to be divided among them all. Ruven and Shimon and Levi. They're going to be divided among Ruven and Shimon and Levi. So again, in this situation where you have 
12 portions in total, when we're trying to figure out what is the chelik bechor, we do not take into account levi, that is an uber. That does, that's not taken into account. And so therefore, you're going to look at the portions and you're going to say, what is the portion extra? What is the amount extra that the bechor is going to get? It's going to be four portions. Because if you're dividing up the portions, it really should be eight portions and four portions. We're only counting the two brothers. Eight plus four being a total of 12. So that four portions is going to be designated as the portion of the bechor. And now now, whatever is remaining, which is eight portions remaining, that has to be divided among three of them. Everyone's going to take uh, three portions, subtract one third. So then now, if Levi dies, so then again, the brothers will take that. So there, Reuven's going to take four portions as his firstborn. So and he's going to take three portions, subtract one third. That's his regular inheritance, not the extra. Part. He's also going to take half of Levi. Let's say Levi died. That's going to be, again, a portion and a third. It's going to be a total of eight portions. That's what's going to come out over here. He's going to end up with eight portions in that case. That's why he didn't minimize the Chelek Bechorah. And let's say you had a situation of ten brothers. So they're going to divide up Levi's portion to ten portions. So the point is that the, the portion of the Bechorah, that is never going to move. So that's why the mission is talking about a child that's one day old. The point is to say that that child that's one day old can minimize the portion of the Bechorah, that extra amount, that is not true when it comes to an Uber. And the Gemara continues, Besura Mas Nuhachi. In Surah, they learned it as we just learned it above. Bepumbadisa Mas Nuhachi. But in Pumbadisa, they learned it as follows a slightly different version of Mar Bereder of Yosef. Amar Mar Bereder of Yosef, Ishmael the Rava. Mar, the son of Rav Yosef, said in the name of Rava, Bechor Shenol the Achar Misa Saviv. Let's say a firstborn is born after his father died. Eino Noto Pishnaim. The halach is if he's born after the death of the father, he does not get the double portion. My time, and what's the reason? Yakir Amar Achman. It has to be Yakir that the father was able to recognize his firstborn. But in this particular case, the Bechor was only born after the death of the father. That's not called Yakir. And the Gemara comments, The Halach is like all of the various versions that we just had of Mar, the son of Rav Yosef, Yosef, in the name of Rav. Thank you for listening. Thank you all for listening. Thank you 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 for listening. And the Rashbam explains, Vyoldulo Ba'inan, again going back to the first version of Marbar of Yosef, it says, Vyoldulo Kishanoldu Lia Bechayev. It means again, these children have to be born while the father is alive. Amar Achman Allah says, Lo Pishnaim. That's when we, when we have the Salach of the double portion. Chelik Bechora, Al Echov Shechem Echor. Again, you get that extra portion for the Bechor. Aval Uber Hanolad Lachar Misoso Shalav. Again, the point is, if the fetus is born after the father dies, Lo Karina Be Vyoldulo, that's not called Vyoldulo. Well, Lagabe Chelik Bechora command the less dummy. So, Again, it doesn't count in terms of calculating the extra portion of the Bechora. You're always going to cal- calculate it according to the children that were born at the time during the lifetime of the father. And then the other version, let's say the Bechor is born after the father dies. Let's say, for example, there are twins, or let's say Yaakov has many wives. Yosef mi Rachel, and then Reuven is born after his death from Leah, and then Yosef is born from Rachel. So there we say there's no double portion. Yakir boina, and there we say it has to be Yakir. V'kevon de Nolad bechayev. Since the child was born in his life, afilo lo ro aviv. Yakir applies as long as the child was born during the lifetime of the father, even if the father didn't actually see the child. Velo hikiro miyamav, even though he never recognized him his whole life. Howel v'roi lehakera, as long as it was possible to recognize him. Ein hakera, ein hakera makevus. But you don't have to have actual like we say again in Menachos, the same idea of Kol Haroi Labila, as long as it's possible to have Hecker, that is good enough. But again, if the child is born after the lifetime of the father, there is no Chelek Bechorah. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rabbi Yitzchak, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yitzchak says, that Rabbi Yochanan says, HaMezakeh Uber Lokan, if somebody tries to transfer something to a fetus, it is not a Kenyan. V'yim Tomer Mishnah Seinah, if you're going to ask from our Mishnah where it seems like it is a Kenyan, Ho'el V'dayto Shaladam Krov Ha'etzel Bano, the reason why our Mishnah is different is because there it's not just any Uber, it's not any fetus, it's his son. And a person's das, a person's understanding, knowledge, and intention is very close to his son, and therefore there's an exception to the rule by a son, and we say that the Kenyan actually is effective. And the Gemara continues, 
continues, Amar Lei Shmuel Rav Chana Bagadito. Shmuel said to Rav Chana from Baghdad, Pok Aisi Li Beyasar, go bring out, bring ten people. Ve'emer Loch Biapai, I'll say in front of them, Hamizakil Oberkana, that the halach is, I want to publicize the halach is that if one transfers to a fetus, it is a good Kenyan. However, the Gemara notes, Vilchasa, the halach actually is Hamizakil Uber Lokana, that if somebody tries to transfer something to a fetus, it is not a Kenyan. And the Gemara continues, Ahu there was a person who said to his wife, Nechasai Livni Diahavuli Minech, my property is going to go to the sons that I have from you. Asa break Shisha, so his older son came, this older son was from a different mother. Amar he said to him, he said to his father, Ahu Gavra, that person, my Tahavela, what's going to happen with that person? He was referring to himself. What happens with me? Are you giving all your property to the children from this, this woman and you're not going to give me any of the property? So Amar so then he said to him, he said to that older son, Zil you can you can acquire just like one of those sons as well. You're also included. And the Gemara now says what the halach is in this case. So first of all, these future children that are going to be born from this wife, they're not going to get anything. Because they aren't, don't even exist yet at all. They're not even ubers. They're not even fetuses in this case. We had a whole discussion above about mezak el uber, but here you're talking about the children that I will have from you in the future, and we're talking about a woman who's not even pregnant. They're not entitled to anything. So now the question is, he did say to this oldest son that zil kani kachad mi bro, you're going to acquire like one of these sons, is that giving now that son an actual extra portion? So, hi, is chulak letalia b'makom b'nai, are we going to give to this young man in the place of the sons an extra portion? Oh, lesle chulak letalia b'makom b'nai, are we not going to give him a portion among the other sons? And the Gemara says, that's a machlokis, Rabbi Avin, Rabbi Maisha, Rabbi Yirmiya de Amri, is chulak letalia b'makom b'nai, Rabbi Avin, Rabbi Meisha, and Rabbi Yirmiya, they say he does get an extra portion, and Rabbi Avov, Rabbi Chanina bar Papi, Rabbi Yitzchak Navcha, Rabbi Avov, and Rabbi Chanina Bar Papi and Rabbi Yitzchak Nafcha, the Amri, they say, less Cholak Latalia B'Malkum B'nai, that there is no extra portion for this young man in the place of the sons. He doesn't get he doesn't get anything more than what he gets as a normal inheritance. Amar le Rabbi Avo, le Rabbi Yirmi, or Rabbi Avo, said to Rabbi Yirmi, Hilchasa Kivasan, is the halach like us? O Hilchasa Kivasaich, or is the halach like you? Amar le said to him, Shita de Hilchasa Kivasan, it's obvious the halach is like us, to Kashishna Minaichu, because we're older than you, so the halach follows us. Velav Hilchasa Kivasaich, and the halach is not like you, to Dardikiatum, because you guys are young, we don't follow you. Amar le said to him, Midi Bikashi Shusa Talia Milsa, does when we pass in halachas, it depends how old the person is, of course not. But time with Talia Milsa, it all depends on the reasoning. And the Gemara now says, So what exactly is the reasoning? That I explained it to him, and we will continue with this discussion in the next video. And Daf Kufmem Gimel Amad Aleph.